Hi, this is Denise Matthew, and welcome to another part of HT 101, How to Read Your Human Design Chart. I just wanted to let you know that if you wanted to slow down the speed of my voice, it's an easy thing to do. Just do it on the playback speed, as I'm showing here, and it will be an experience tailor-made for you. If you haven't already watched the first video that I made, it's where I talked about type, strategy, and profile. If you already know that information, absolutely jump in and let's go to town. But if that's something that you're just not sure about, I'm assuming now that you already know about it because I've already done a video. So I do suggest that you have a look at that, see if there's anything that might help you to follow along with this video. So let's go and start talking about the authority. So if we're looking for the authority on the chart, you'll see it right here that I have it circled so that you can have that idea of exactly where all this information is on your chart. So you can see exactly where you stand and what your authority is. In the basics of human design and what human design theory says are most important is knowing your type and then your strategy on how to interact with the world. The authority is another dimension that adds in more clarity on the decisions that you make because based on our emotions, our decisions can be changed. So there's several different types of authorities. Some are specific to manifestors, some are specific to projectors, some are specific to generator types. So let's get started. So if we look at the data from Jovian Archives based on August 2020, you can see that 46% or almost 50% of people have a solar plexus or a defined solar plexus or a defined emotional center, which means they have emotional authority, which means all the rest of the people have a different type of authority or they don't have the emotional wave to talk about. So it means that 50% have emotional authority and 50% don't. And that talks about 50% of people being able to make a decision immediately in the moment, as soon as it feels right based on their strategy, and 50% of the people needing more clarity to find the decision that works best for them. So let's get into more about what that means and we can talk about the authorities and how they can dramatically affect the way we make the decisions in our lives so that we can get a better outcome. So let's briefly go through the authorities so we can understand what they are, how they differ, and how they can work for us. So the first thing that we know whenever we look at a body graph and it will be written as I showed you already on the chart. So you'll know what your authority is. But if you're just looking at the body graph without looking at the chart details or anything that's written, you're going to notice that some you will have either a white triangle on the right hand side or a open emotional center or you will have a brown triangle on the right hand side or a defined emotional center. And this is a huge part of authority in human design. What that means, and this is for all types of, of course, except for reflectors, because reflectors don't have any defined centers. So all types that have a defined emotional center need to wait for clarity, or it is preferred that you wait for clarity. And what that means is that because of the emotional wave or our emotions that we have based on having a defined emotional center, we have an oscillation of our moods or you could say that you have your up days and you have your down days when you have a solar plexus that's defined. Now that's not to say that somebody who has an open center or a white center or an undefined solar plexus doesn't have some level of emotions. But what we're saying is that the person with the defined solar plexus, they are transmitting the emotions. They are feeling the emotions themselves, but they're energetically transmitting that energy out and that anybody who has an open solar plexus, they can pick that energy up and not only do they pick it up, but they amplify it, they make it bigger. So yes, somebody with an emotional center that's open or undefined will 100% have emotions and feel emotions. We will talk about that more later on when we go through the centers, but I just wanted to talk about what it means to have a defined emotional center. Now, the emotional wave is something that's important to know when you are talking about your authority. And I'm going to go through that so that we can get that clear. And I'm going to spend a little more time on this just because it is so important. 
So if we know that 50% of the population have emotional authority and 50% of the population don't, we can say one thing for certain. 50% of the population need to wait for clarity before jumping into a decision. And 50% of the population who don't have emotional authority can make a decision in the moment if it feels good. So that's a really big thing to know. And it's as simple as that. If you have a brown triangle on the right side of the chart or a defined emotional center or solar plexus, then that means you need time to make decisions because you need time to go through your emotional waves to find clarity. And if you don't have a defined emotional center or it's open or it's white, that means that you can make a decision in the moment to do something that you want to do. So it's as simple as that. So if you can remember that you are open or if you're closed in the, the emotional center, you're going to know right away that your strategy is something you'll continue to use. And you can use your strategy in the moment if you're open. And if you're defined, then you're going to take your strategy and you're going to go through your wave. And then once you go through your wave, then you're going to go back to your strategy. So in human design, our emotional waves are considered the ups and downs that we have in our emotions. So our highest highs and our lowest lows and pretty much everything in between is what makes up an emotional wave. Based on human design theory, emotional waves only happen for people who have defined emotional centers. The way people who have an emotional wave make decisions is by waiting. Instead of jumping into decisions, there is a waiting period and it's all about getting clarity about the decisions we have to make in our lives. The waiting period is meant to be for the duration of our emotional wave. But most people who have a defined emotional wave don't want to wait and instead want to jump in an opportunity and 9 out of 10 times they regret their decision. Like I just mentioned, the emotional waves are considered the ups and downs of our emotions. A full emotional wave will undulate through the whole gambit of emotions from our highest highs to our lowest lows, and then it will start again. All waves are not considered equal, so knowing your specific wave and all its peaks and dips will help you navigate your decision-making process. What this means is that if you have an opportunity, then you will usually have a better experience if you don't decide right away, and if possible, take the time you need to go through all the highs and lows of your moods. The theory is that you should feel positive about the opportunity that you are thinking about for your full wave. And if you do, the action, response, or invitation is correct for you. If, on the other hand, at some part of your wave you feel it's not a good decision for you, then it's probably better to let the opportunity go. So for a manifester with an emotional wave, it's all about making an opportunity happen and waiting to go through their wave to see if it's correct for them. If it feels correct all the way through, they can go ahead, inform those who will be impacted, and then initiate. For projectors, it's about getting an invitation and going through their whole wave to see if it feels correct for them. And if it does, they can accept the invitation. If not, they can reject it. For generator types, it's about getting something to respond to and then going through their wave to feel if it's something they want to respond to or not. And if they do, they can respond to it. Otherwise, they can let the opportunity go. So now we're going to go through all the other authorities that are not emotional. And as I said before, the most important thing with these types of authorities is if in the moment it feels good, then the answer is yes. And we'll, I'll just talk about each one as we go through and the extra added cues on how to figure it out if it's right for you. And the funniest thing about authority is this. People who have emotional authority usually want to jump into decisions right away. And people who have authority that isn't emotional generally want to wait on something. So you have people who have emotional authority jumping in and doing something and sort of regretting it afterwards. And then you have people who have, have non-emotional authority and they just want to sit on an opportunity. And a lot of times they'll miss out on it. So if you can use these cues that I'm going to give you to help out, it may make making decisions a lot easier for you and also something where you get better results in the long run. The next most common authority is sacral authority, also called generated authority. And just like it sounds, only generator types have this type of authority, since it's only found in people with defined sacrals. As well as having a defined sacral, they also need to have an open emotional center, also called an undefined emotional center or solar plexus. So when we're talking about a generated sacral authority, we're really talking about a gut feeling of th something being correct for you. A 
a lot of people will talk about my gut told me it was the right thing to do. So generators can have a lot of this gut feeling kind of energy that says, yes, this is correct for me. So if something shows up in your outside world and you want to respond to it, if it feels right in that moment and you and you get a hit, an internal hit that says, yes, this is correct for me, then then that would be correct for you because you don't need to go through an emotional wave. Now, human design also bring in another strategy, a part of the strategy, and it's called the sacral sounds. The sacral sounds are uh uh-huh and uh uh-uh. So it's a positive or a negative sound that generator types can make to see if something is correct for them. So for instance, when you're using sacral sounds as a generator type, you usually will have somebody ask you questions and instead of actually thinking about the answers, you'll say "Uh uh-huh or "Uh uh-uh. And what usually will happen is you'll bypass the mind and the gut or your internal instinct will say, yes, this is right for me or no, this isn't right for me. So that's what the basis of sacral sounds are. Some people have energy, some generator types have energy that's so fast that the sacral sounds just aren't right for them. They're just too slow. So they can say yes or no, or they they might have another cue. The sacral sounds, although a lot of a lot of people like them, they're not for everybody. So if you have a different way of bypassing the mind to get an internal hit of yes or no, then that's what you would use. The sacral sounds are for some people, as I said, and others don't like them. But ultimately, as long as you're getting an internal hit or some level of a yes or no that your your body's telling you, that not your mind is telling you, then you will get the correct decision for you in the moment and you will have the clarity, but you don't need clarity over time. It's in that moment. You say yes or no, uh uh-huh or uh uh-uh to something that you want to respond to. These next authorities that I'll be talking about are usually only found in manifestors or projector types, which means they're more rare and they also require a little more finesse to get in touch with them. So when we talk about the splenic authority, both manifestors and projectors can have this authority. When a projector or manifestor type have this authority, then the emotional center and sacral are both undefined and the spleen is defined. The spleen is considered an intuitive center and all about the now. So the splenic response to an action or invitation is very quick and instant and in the moment. It's believed that the splenic response comes as a very quiet internal blip that isn't repeated. And just like the sacral response, the splenic response is an immediate yes or no hit. And it comes after an invitation is offered for a projector or after an action is being contemplated for a manifester. What that means is that when someone has this authority, there's a need to get in touch with themselves and their internal cues. Usually the way to start to track how your individual splenic response alerts you is by figuratively going back in time and remembering ways that your body reacted in response to an action or invitation and seeing what cues showed up when you made a decision that you felt worked out positively and alternately when you made a decision that didn't live up to your expectations. The more you get attuned to the subtle signs that your body gives you, the more you will come to understand your splenic response. The next authority is called the ego or ego manifested authority. This authority is only for manifestor types and means that the sacral, spleen and emotional center are undefined and the will center is defined to the throat. The will center can also be called the ego center or the heart center. So this authority is all about the heart's desire. Since manifestors are the only true initiators of all the types, When the will is defined to the throat, there's a need to connect with an internal desire, what they truly want. The concept here is that if they truly want something and the idea of having it makes their heart sing, then they can go out and initiate and make it happen. The caveat is that because the will center is considered a work to rest center, or there is a need to rest after having done a certain quantity of work, then when you as a manifester have this authority, it's best to manage and work with your energy so you don't get burnt out because someone with a defined will can easily go beyond their physical capabilities since willpower is a force to be reckoned with. Ego projected authority is when you are a projector with a defined ego or will center. Again, this talks about your heart's desire. In other words, whether your invitation aligns with your heart's desire or something that you truly want as a projector type. And since wording can be odd in human design sometimes, I just want to say that there's nothing about being projected out or anything like that. This is all about being a projector and having a defined ego. That's all it means. And just like ego manifested authority, it's really important for a projector type to check in on the energy piece to make sure they have the energy for the invitation before they decide to accept it.
because just like with a manifester, the will center can push somebody to go beyond their limitations and they can get burnt out or even sick. And because of the powerful nature of the will center, this can happen with any of the human design types. The next authority is called self-projected authority. This authority comes when the sacral, spleen, emotional center, and will center are all undefined and the G center or identity center are defined and connected to the throat. This authority is only for projectors. When you have this as your authority, talking with others and bouncing the information off other people can assist you in decision making because by seeing the reaction that your words elicit, you can gauge whether an invitation is correct for you or not. Another very similar authority that I will group in here as well, since it requires talking about an invitation, is mental projected authority. This isn't found in all body graphs, but it is found in some, so I just thought I would mention it. It's when the throat is defined to the Ajna, and sometimes this is called no authority based on whatever chart you're looking at. And this authority is exactly the same as the self-projected authority where a person is going to talk about their invitations with somebody. And the other way that this authority can show up is when the head and Ajna are defined as well. And one very important part of the self-projected authority or the mental authority is that when a projector is talking about their invitations to people, it's really important for them to get somebody who they trust and who they respect their opinions. The old saying, don't throw your pearls before swine, is very apt when a projector decides who to pick to talk to. The last authority is no authority, also called outer authority, which is when there is no definition other than the head and ajna. Sometimes the throat is defined as well. It's really based on where the body graph is generated from. Like I just mentioned, some body graphs will call this mental authority when the ajna and head are defined and nothing else is really defined. And just like the self-projected authority, when a projector receives an invitation, they can talk about their invitation with trusted people and based on the response of the trusted people, they can accept or reject the invitation. And one more thing to say is that a projector decides for themselves whether or not they want to accept an invitation. It's always going to be about free will. They don't have to decide based on other people's reactions or not. This is just the authority and it can be helpful to them, but if they don't find it helpful, that works as well. Ultimately, it's about finding your own way and doing what's right for you. Since reflectors are unique in the way they interact with the world and are considered, as I said before, lunar beings, reflectors don't have an additional layer of authority. They have their 28 day or 29 day moon cycle and that's pretty much the way they make their decisions because it, it is a long process and it does give a lot more clarity because it's a whole 28 to 29 day cycle or a moon cycle. So in that way, a reflector doesn't have a, an, an inner authority, but they do have their moon cycle and that's how they make their decisions.